Uh, just wanted to show you where we are uh, on the fuselage. At this point, we're, uh, the, the construction time is right at 50 hours. So um, a lot has been done. Um, the balsa uh, plank, or, uh, yeah, planking has been, uh, has been applied on top of that, four ounces of uh, fiberglass cloth and epoxy resin then on top of that uh, have applied the uh, the uh, the uh, the veneer strips this happens to be basswood uh, got it from uh, national balsam so let's just take a look at uh, where we are on the front as you can see we've uh, rigged up this this uh, jig uh, to hold the fuselage in place it's almost impossible to work on it without something like this um, uh, the way it's set up, you can you can rotate it, you can rotate it on the side. Uh, you can rotate it 90 degrees. You can put it upside down. <laughs> uh, while we've got it upside down, I just want to point out that uh, inside this engine bay here, from F1 uh, to F3, I have uh, painted it with uh, epoxy resin. Just use a brush and a clean rag and wipe it down, and uh, that'll seal it up really good. Now, you don't want to use paint, you don't want to use uh, varnish, uh, uh, smoke oil and uh, gasoline, and the oils and gasoline just can wreak havoc if they get in here, and some will, but you, you sure don't want it soaking into the, into the wood. Uh, once the, um, the veneer is on, and the planking is on, you need to, to make uh, some openings here, and we'll turn this around and look at the other side. Uh, this is, well, this is the bottom, obviously. Uh, up here on top, there's two holes. This is where the uh, cam lock fasteners uh, will be uh, bolted in for the flying wires. Uh, these just really work great. Um, back here, I'll be, well, <laughs> take this off. I'll leave it on. A little, a little rough to do without the screws in it. Um, Here's the opening for the cockpit, obviously. Uh, the template was used uh, to, to get the sizing right. Uh, when it's all done, it's gonna look pretty good. Here's the, uh, the headrest, it'll go right, uh, right here. I'm gonna turn this around so we can take a look at the other end. So my camera girl will just move back a bit. We'll uh, turn it around. sideways here. First of all, you'll notice that uh, you'll notice that uh, this jig here on the end uh, rotates. That's very handy. Because uh, you're going to be working on, on the top of the fuselage, on the bottom of the fuselage. Uh, on these scallops, or you could call them semicircles, they're just here so that the covering We'll have a nice transition as it goes from uh, a, a, a flat or rounded surface, actually, or a solid surface uh, to the, the cloth surface. All of these are specced in the uh, manuals. So what you would do is, is you'd get the radius, uh, use a compass, and then just cut it out. So that's really all there is to it. You can also see that I have, uh, what am I doing? I just marked here where the stripe is gonna go. Just about like that. Looks like we have a visitor here. He's not in the picture. He's not in the picture. This is one of our quality control experts. We're gonna have him move along. Anyway, I this is uh, one and a half inches wide. So this would represent where the stripe goes. Uh, what I do is, is is have the cloth attach and then I you know, terminate the, the front edge of the cloth right about in the middle of the stripe. And that seems to work pretty well. This will all be varnished up on this end. Um, another thing to take, let's have him go away there. Uh, back here is uh, what I call the cable tubing exits. I don't know what else to call them. 
but uh, these guide the uh, the control cables as they uh, as they travel back and uh, actuate the uh, elevator and the rudder. Um, balsa set in here, and then it's it's a sanded flush. Now, obviously, I don't have these; these aren't finished yet. And uh, but they're going to be they're going to be uh, filleted with some uh, some spackle. Um, one of the things, that, if you'll just step back, one of the things that I I wanted to show you was some of the tools that I use to cut this out. Um, here is a, what are these? Mini hacksaw blades. Uh, these are real good, real good. You can cut them real easy. Just cut it like that. Stick them in some kind of a holder. And uh, this is really good for cutting out um, um, well, anywhere you need to cut out. It, it, they're very fine teeth on this, so may, may not make it a lot of sense. Another thing you might want to consider, <clears throat> these are pretty pretty new to me, the Permagret tools. They're carbide, uh, uh, smoother on this side, pretty rough on this side. These things just work great. Here's another one that's smaller. Um, if you're only going to buy one, these are about 10 bucks. These flat ones are just terrific. Uh, and here's a curved one. Just like that. They just work great. Here's another one that's uh, almost like a file. Not very expensive. I got these from Aircraft Spruce, so it's something you might want to keep in mind. And of course, uh, 100 grit. A sanding pad just, just used to by the way on the uh, <clears throat> what happens is when you put on the the balsa planking um, you're gonna get a pretty rounded surface then you're gonna put on four ounce fiberglass cloth and it will even become rounder and then you're gonna add uh, the um the veneer using stick it sticks it it's all described in the manual when you use that get that veneer on then you sand it down it 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 becomes virtually round and smooth there's not a lot to do um this is gonna this is gonna turn out great so this is this is pretty much where we are can you get a long shot of this um Pretty much where we are at this point, 50 hours in, and uh, if, um, if you have some questions, just email me, call me if you want, and uh, we'll go from there. So, thank you.